Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about a creationist whose work you probably knew about even if you didn't know his name. So let's jump right in. <laughs> Adnan Akhtar, aka Harun Yahya, is a Turkish creationist, though not a Christian one. He's actually Islamic, and his anti-evolution arguments are exactly the same as any that you would find at Answers in Genesis or the Institute for Creation Research. In fact, Islamic creationism in Turkey really took off after the Turkish Minister of Education began pushing arguments from the ICR in public schools starting in the 1980s. The ICR even sent teaching materials, and DVDs to Islamic creationist organizations. In a 2018 video repeating the long-debunked idea that Archaeopteryx was a fake, a claim which even most creationists don't take seriously, Kent Hoven read directly from Yahya's website that feathered dinosaurs didn't exist. Yahya formed the Creationist Science Research Foundation in 1990 and has been writing books and organizing conferences ever since. In 1998, Yahya published a book titled The Evolution Deceit, arguing for creationism. By the early 2000s, Yahya had apparently shifted from creationism towards intelligent design, since Islam doesn't necessitate that the Earth be young. This scored his website a brief spot on the Discovery Institute as, quote, an Islamic intelligent design website, close quote, even though ID proponents like Casey Luskin and Bruce Chapman now vigorously deny any association. It should be noted that the Discovery Institute considers ID to be a purely scientific enterprise, which is a bit ironic when David Berlinski expressed in an interview his joy over the religious revival, both in Islam and Christianity, that has resulted from ID. Additionally, Chapman, the actual founder of the Discovery Institute, has noted that the organization is friendly with Turkish writer Mustafa Akyal, who formerly worked for Yahya's Science Research Foundation. Oh well. After his early flirt with ID, Yahya denounced the movement because it wasn't religious enough. Georgia Purdom has authored a chapter in the New Answers Book 2 that argues much the same. Yahya published the infamous Atlas of Creation in 2006, which is full of shining examples of the Haran Yahya tactic. The tactic goes something like this. Show a picture of a modern animal next to a picture of a similar looking fossil and assert that no evolution has occurred. No really, that, that, that's it. No research needed, no reason to cite technical literature or know anything about comparative morphology, just leave your audience to fill in the gaps. Anyone can do it. Now, Yahya's book wasn't exactly a ringing success for a number of reasons. In at least several cases, Yahya incorrectly identified either the fossil or the modern animal. Richard Dawkins pointed out a number of such examples. For instance, on page 468, the banded sea snake is labeled as an eel. That seems like kind of a serious mistake. Astronomer Salman Hamid noted that while this picture is in the early version of the book, it was removed from the later electronic version, a change he called Harunian omission. PZ Myers also made famous the fact that the image of the so-called modern Cadus fly on page 244 is actually a fishing lure complete with a visible metal hook. Like with the banded sea snake, Hamid showed that the electronic version omits the lure. Clearly, Yahya, or whomever he relied on, hadn't originally noticed the hook. Oops. But this tactic of showcasing a fossil and modern organism side by side to get the audience to think no evolution has occurred isn't unique to Yahya. In fact, Standing for Truth's partner, Raw Matt, posted and defended this picture. On the left side is a picture of the trilobite Dalmanites with what looks like a trilobite. Could it be a modern trilobite? 
Well, five minutes of googling later, we found the picture and the identity of the alleged modern trilobite. It is, in fact, a cerolid isopod, specifically Ceratocerolus meridionalis. A related species, C. trilobitoides, looks even more like a trilobite. Could it really be? Well, no. While the outward similarities between Dalmanides and Ceratocerolus may fool someone unfamiliar with arthropod morphology and phylogenetics, there are a number of differences between them. For starters, trilobites aren't considered closely related to isopods. Trilobites are members of the clade Artiopoda, while isopods and all other crustaceans are members of Mandibulata. Genetics has shown that crustaceans are paraphyletic to insects, forming the clade Pancrustacea. And Pancrustacea is sister to Myriapoda, containing centipedes and millipedes, forming Mandibulata. Trilobites, on the other hand, have been held as closely related to chelicerates for the past few decades. Though trilobites themselves don't have chelicerae, they also don't have the specialized mandibles that mandibulates have. Hence the name. It's for this reason that no researchers refer to cerolid isopods as trilobites because they aren't. One also has to wonder how Rawmat thinks isopods are related to trilobites. Was the common ancestor, sorry, archetype, of both groups a trilobite that later evolved the specialized mandibles of mandibulates? Or are trilobites crustaceans that lost their mandibles? Or were multiple independent groups of trilobites created? Who knows? The point is that isopods aren't trilobites, and in connecting them as if they were the same, Raw Matt was unwittingly accepting a lot more evolution in that jump than most creationists do. Now let's get to the second picture. The picture on the right shows an image of Cetacosaurus next to a modern parrot. This time, though, Raw Matt's got it. Cetacosaurus must be a parrot. Even the name means parrot lizard. But again, epic fail. To begin, the time is wrong. 227 million years ago was the late Triassic. Cetacosaurus is dated at 126 to 101 million years ago, the early Cretaceous. Wait, what does it say at the bottom right? Do not be gullible. Question the evolution fairy tale. Hmm. I wonder what the whole Cetacosaurus looks like. Let's do a quick Google search. Let's see. Cetacosaurus. Okay, huh, that's interesting. What does a parrot look like? Huh. It doesn't look anything at all like a parrot. It's almost as though Raw Matt has never seen a picture of Cetacosaurus before. Even Ken Ham's Ark Encounter doesn't make such a bonehead mistake, recognizing Cetacosaurus as a dinosaur. Hmm. There's actually a page on Facebook that makes loads of these memes called Where is the Evolution? Raw Matt got his picture from this page. Let's look at a few more. Here's an image that claims a hippo fossil dated to 1.5 million years ago looks exactly the same as a modern hippo. There's just one problem. No one's claiming this hippo skull to be 1.5 million years old. The picture is of a park ranger in Africa holding just a dead modern hippo skull, thanks to the natural atheist on Twitter for finding me the original picture. The only reference I can find to this picture and 1.5 million years ago is an article on the website Express titled, what is this real-life monster skull unearthed in Africa? Dragon fossil stuns skeptics. The article writes, quote, Fossils of ancient hippo teeth suggest the animal evolved over a relatively quick period of just 1.5 million years to adapt to the changing environment, close quote. I guess this passes for scholarship among creationists. Or take a look at this one. Both the fossil and modern picture are claimed to be the species Papilio Machion. But are they? I have to thank Small Microraptor on Twitter for finding this one. The fossil butterfly is not Papilio Machion, but Prodryas Persephone. It also didn't live 50 million years ago, but 35 million. And there's this picture. Pekaya doesn't even have a backbone. So how could it be an eel? More creationist scholarship on display.
Fortunately, there is also a page on Facebook titled Here is the Evolution that debunks these memes. It's run by the guy who operates the YouTube channel Exabyte Spider. Go check him out. So, when creationists post a picture like this, he responds with this. Or, when a creationist posts this one, he responds with this. Word to the wise, never take creationists at face value. So you get the point. The horror and yaya tactic is dishonest, and any time you see one of those memes, recognize that it's probably totally wrong. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.